Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We are super excited to have you all here on our fifth demo day. It's kind of hard to believe it's happened already. My name is Pano Anthos, the founder of XRC Labs, and all of you as an amazing ecosystem. Um, it's a very special day. It's the end of boot camp. Uh, we have nine companies that have been truly treated terribly by us to get better and better and refine what they're doing in a way that even your grandmother could understand them. Not easy to do, um, but we liken it to being like a ballerina. Looks like anyone could dance, but it has taken 20 some odd years to get there. We see the kind of work that they're doing, deep, deep work, turning into something very polished and professional, and we're very excited to, to showcase them today. Before I get started, um, I want to introduce Joel Towers. Uh, this man has had an enormous influence, impact in this program. The very space we have here is a very much a function of his vision in letting us uh, participate in the Parsons vision and growing this to be what it is today and what will continue to be in the future. So I'd like to have Joel come up and, and say a few words and then we'll kick off the program. Joel? I got a, I got a, I'm on a lap. So, <laughs> should we try that again? Um, you know, Pano usually gives you the slide deck before you go up there. That wasn't the picture he was planning to use, so it was a little. Um, welcome, everybody. It is, it was, I was a picture of me in jeans. That's one I liked better, you know? Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is really about the companies today, so I want to be brief, but I did want to say a few words. First of all, thanks to Pano. Um, as always, in the entire XRC team, when Pano brought this idea to us um, and brought Kurt Salmon, uh, a part of Accenture, um, and uh, Parsons together to look at the retail space and to look at the consumer goods space and to figure out how to really support the idea of disruption and transformation in those sectors, uh, it was such a brilliant and obvious idea, which is how brilliant ideas often come across. And, um, even I could understand it. I don't know if that makes me Pano's grandmother. Uh, but it, it was something that we wanted to be a part of immediately. And we did. And five cohorts in, um, the work is extraordinary. You will see the nine today. Um, but 44 companies, a level of success that Pano will talk about. I don't want to steal his thunder, but is, I think, unmatched in the accelerator um, uh, territory. Uh, in terms of the company's success and ongoing success. And so I'm incredibly proud for Parsons to be part of this. Uh, I wanted to just highlight one piece of it for you, however, that I think, um, for me, makes all the difference in, in what's going on here at XRC and, and to a larger extent at Parsons. You heard Pano use the word ecosystem there, and I think he'll probably come back to that several times during his brief comments. Um, it is a network that makes this work. And we, uh, we came to understand that very deeply in the last couple of weeks, because some of you may know that we had a pretty um, significant fire diagonally across the street. In fact, some of the things that we've set up today are, an, are the after effects of having to move about 15% of our total uh, square footage, about 30% of our studios, about 600 classes uh, into new spaces, new making facilities, all within the span of about one week. And the way that works, beyond having a fantastic and dedicated team that understands innovation, which is at the core of XRC, is because of the network, because of the ecosystem that we are a part of, because of the people who said, let's figure out how to make this work and to help make that work and to see success and continuation happen over and over and again because people are committed to it. And so, it's the real kind of network, not the kind of network that requires you to be testifying before Congress. Um, the kind of network that is about people and the interaction among them. Uh, and that's where innovation comes from, and that's what you've built here. Uh, and so we are very, very pleased uh, and proud uh, to be a part of it. And it is my great pleasure to see this work today and to give the stage back to Pano. So thank you all for being here. Joel, come on back up. So um, we have a special little um, surprise for you. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> and no, come on up. A special thank you. Ah, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, you look, you, that's, that's the Joel we all know. 
Um, but uh, I want to have someone even, even more special than you. I mean, no offense, but, uh, <laughs> one, but you're very lesson. special. But someone equally special to come up and uh, offer uh, our thanks to you in a way that I could never articulate myself. So we're going to ask Kay to come up. Kay Unger, the chairman of the board of Parsons, our extraordinary fairy godmother. <laughs> Do you need Sure, that's great, thank you. Um, well, I may be the fairy godmother, but here's the godfather. <laughs> anyway, today um, we want to say thank you for, first of all, if you talk about moving things quickly and what has happened in the past few weeks with the fire and moving everyone, Joel is really at the center of making all this happen and the innovation. And when you think of XRC, when it was brought to Joel two and a half years ago, and with Kurt Solomon and Arnold Aronson, our board member, within two weeks, the way I remember it, Joel said yes, and more importantly, convinced the new school and the university to say yes. Well, most of you know, in academia, that's a miracle. So one, today is also about gratitude. Now, I've worked with Joel for how many years? Maybe five, six, whatever. And also, five years ago, Joel had a vision for a making center across the street, which unfortunately was injured by the fire. It's beautiful. And um, this vision was such an amazing uh, addition to Parsons and the New School and the disruption and creativity and innovation. And so for all the wonderful years of what Joel has done, and that many of you may know that Joel is, has been our executive dean for what will be a decade and is staying on until we find a new dean, but he is moving into the most amazing new position as the second only university professor that will be focusing on his incredible passion of environment, sustainability, climate change, and healthy materials. But back to what he's built here in the 14 years he's been here, and what he's meant to all of us and all of you in cohort five. In your honor, Pano and XRC has donated $10,000 to the naming of the wood shop in the making center, which is Joel's love and passion. And I'm the, it's such an honor to be able to present this to you. And here's a picture of this amazing, amazing place. I, I've got this still. <laughs> Phil, Phil always knows when I need to talk, so he's got it. Thank you, Pano and Kay. This oh, one is, photo. One photo? OK. Go ahead. I got this. I don't need this thing. I got, I, when I speak, it just magically it comes it out does, that it way. It does. I got it. Thank you, Pano. Thank you, Kay. That's really very special. Beautiful um, gratitude. And Carly Ann. Thank you, Parsons alum, Carly Ann. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's take a photo. OK. Real, real quick? OK. Sorry. And then we got to get on to this business. Yeah, get on the real business. Okay. Yeah. Good, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. And, and if, you haven't, if you haven't gone into the Making Center when it opens back up in the summer, the wood shop is insane. You just walk in and you're in a wood shop. And I remember being in seventh grade in wood shop. And I love the whole experience. And I, it takes me back immediately. So we're very happy to be participating in that honor. So let's do a quick uh, review and then hit, hit the startups hard. So our, our mission here is to foster companies. We're helping build companies and products and all about innovation using design thinking. So the whole idea here is all about the customer first, the customer journeys, the way customers think. It's all about them. It's not about us. And we embrace the very values that Joel is going to be uh, pursuing um, pell-mell. Um, and leading us forward, especially in the area of sustainability and the ideas of moderate consumption. You can read our values. Uh, we're very focused on it. We care a lot about what, what Parsons has helped instill in our uh, opportunities. 
Now, our model is very, very straightforward. We have a venture fund, which funds the entrepreneurs. Um, they sit in the lab. The lab is funded by sponsors, many of whom are here today, which I'll get into in a second. Especially, uh, and I want to call out uh, Kurt Sam and Accenture, as well as Parsons. In fact, there's a live stream going on today globally through the Accenture network we're very excited about. Thank you, Accenture. And uh, the live retail platform, which we're working on right now to actually make the technologies available for everyone to see in real time. We had over 300 applications in the last cohort. And by the way, we don't advertise. We do not work hard at applications. We do not believe in that model. It's mostly referrals that come into us. The cool thing is a diversity of startups are from all over the world. And a heavy focus on retail, as it can be obvious, and also female founders, and you'll see that next, because over 45% of the companies in this class are run by women. And that is a consistent theme that is just naturally happening, and we're very excited uh, that it's very consistent and very strong. And if you look at our model versus the rest of the industry, we're way over-indexed in a positive way around the number of women who are running our companies. Both the applications are equal, but you look at the number of funded companies on our side who are run by women, and it's off the charts. So the trends that we're looking at again is the innovation's moving faster than ever. And we have, I show this slide all the time, it's a head nodding slide at this point, but you really need to understand that retail and the whole culture of retail and technology are not divergent. They really just need to be combined. Um, and we need to learn from the technology models that are out there to innovate faster. The big question here is, there, is there gonna be a middle in the next 10 years? We see a lot of growth in off price, we see a lot of growth in Premier, if you look at the revenue growth of 37% and 81%, but middle market is stagnant at best. And in terms of the number of stores, it's declining dramatically. So it's of great concern to us. How does the middle market shop retail going forward? We also believe very strongly that scarcity is the new inventory. So as we talk about thematically what we're looking at in terms of our businesses, we're very excited to watch and be part of the various new models of retail by which FOMO really makes a difference in terms of how you think about businesses going forward. It's not stack it high and let it fly. It's much more about, as Supreme does, they shut down their website in the fall. It's just down, not even open for business. Um, they don't care, they don't think about it, and yet their lines are out the door. So the idea that you have to have overabundance of supply is simply not the case any longer. And we love loyalty, and it's not just about points. The very things that Joel and, and Parsons talk about in terms of sustainability, giving back to the environment, being consistent, is all about the kind of new products and, and, and companies that we're seeing, and we tend to foster. And lastly, the store experience is accelerating. If you haven't been in the American Girl store on 52nd Street, you need to go. Um, as you can see inside here on the left is the um, salon, where all the girls have their, their hair done and their dolls are done. And when I tell you that there's loyalty and, and fervor and fanaticism there, it's unbelievable. Um, and they know how to run a store experience. It's not just about product. So the themes that we're going to talk briefly about in terms of our companies, store to consumer. The most valuable commodity in the world is your time. And therefore, the companies that we looked at in this platform, Philogic and StoreDNA, are all about giving the consumer back their time and moving as quickly as possible through the retail experience. The second is ex stores experience, which we kind of touched on briefly. And Vivit has a great platform to bring the customer and the product together in a unique way so that you're not dealing with a lot of friction. Have ever, any, any of you ever tried to register um, a product, like an appliance, and go through those stupid cards? You know what I'm, what I'm saying and how difficult that is and painful. We think of personalization and the ability to get what we want when we want it. So Clark is really focused on this next generation wish list. Can I be shopping and can I remember everything that I've asked for? So if you ever have gone into a, a store and clicked a photo of product and then completely forgotten about your photo roll and what products you were looking at, Clark will solve that problem. And we think about user interfaces. The, f the user interface of the future is not a website. It's voice, it's text, it's whatever is as simple as possible. And Converge is doing a phenomenal job in building out that platform. And, la and AR has been around, it's been the talk of the town. It's consistently underperformed um, and overpromised. But in this case, Lexset is doing something amazing in the furniture space that you will be completely blown away by. As we think of Store's platform, we think about Frenzy and their ability to make an influencer far more money than they've ever gotten before. 
If you're an influencer, you need to talk to Frenzy. And brands also need to be talking to Frenzy because at the same time, that business has been very broken and now can get fixed very quickly. And then we think about store as service or rentals. We look at Hempster. The service model that Hempster is delivering to malls and brands and retailers is extraordinary in their ability to deliver something as simple as we all know as tailoring in a whole new way and, and platform. And last but not least, Doris Plant. And this model here, Kira Kira, is kind of pioneering the girl STEM educational model with an Etsy platform to allow for commercialization and for girls to be able to make money as well as learn. We're gonna take risks here, folks. These are, these are high beta um, companies. There, there's a lot of risk to them. Uh, we expect failure. Uh, not every company will succeed. We, we hope for the best. We work hard and we share a lot and we learn from them. We learn enormous amounts. This is a mutual um, beneficial relationship and we are excited to present them today. So our founding partners, as we mentioned, are Parsons and Accenture Strategy. We've been hugely influential in helping build this. Someone asked me, where did you get this mailing list from, Pano? How did you build this? And I said, it's not us, it's the network. And Accenture and Parsons have been very, very influential in that. Our sponsors, super helpful, super impactful, um, and they range the gap. The latest uh, new platinum sponsor is Estee Lauder. We're very excited because we think the beauty space is ripe for innovation and disruption in a good way, and a number of other companies, uh, all of many of whom are here today. We have also an advisory council. That council is companies that can't write a check, they're too small, but are willing to pilot and innovate very, very quickly, and you'll hear a number of announcements today. Our team. So this is not possible without everyone who's working here. And it's an extraordinary work of art that's been pulled off. If you had seen this place 15 minutes ago, you would have said, ain't gonna happen. Um, but I wanna call out a few people in particular as part of that. Carly Ann, our director, is amazing. And she's done an extraordinary job. And I want you to give her a hand because she's just pulled off an absolute mirror. Holly Zimmerman, who has expanded our network dramatically, both on the venture and the investor front, and has brought our companies to shape in a way that none of us ever could. Um, she's a great taskmaster and a, and a visionary. And last but not least, Susie Case, who has actually built a staff and helped us organize in a way that I could never do on my own. Um, it, this place would be completely uh, frazzled and a complete mess if it were left to me. And so it's really, these three have been influential, super supportive, and, and have given extraordinary amounts of time, way beyond the call to make this possible. So I thank all of you, individually and forever, and I'm completely in your debt. Our portfolio, last but not least, because this is a special sauce, 44 companies, and I have a couple announcements to make today. Um, some of you saw the emails, but Shop Shops, which is our Chinese live streaming platform, just got backed by Union Square Ventures, which is a very, very rare thing to happen. If you look at their portfolio, they almost never take an accelerator company. They have so much deal flow, they don't need, that. They don't need accelerators, quote unquote. Um, but they were just blown away by Leah and what she's doing at Shop Shops and, and, and Billy. Another great company, the female shaving platform, has already sold out of their inventory three years, three times in the last three months, which you'd say, wait a minute, there's a supply chain problem here, but it's actually, demand is insane, um, and has gotten this massive round done. And both companies walked in with nothing, literally nothing. Neither of them had, Shop Shops had an app that didn't work and was broken, and Billy had an idea. And that's the fun part of this, is when you see something that comes out of nothing, because the founders make the difference here. And this is all about them. So I'm so happy to turn this over because now the magic starts. Thank you very much. All right, hello everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us and uh, thank you to Kay and Joel again for joining us in celebrating our fifth cohort today. Now, these group of founders are amazing. They've worked really hard over the past 14 weeks and have made tremendous progress. So I'm just gonna cut to the chase and jump right into it and let them tell you more about where they are today. So first up, we have Lexet. So everyone knows how frustrating finding new furniture can be. First, there's the hassle of finding the, the perfect piece. Then once you find that piece, there's the hassle of worrying whether it will fit with your existing items. Lexet helps retailers increase their conversion by giving their customers the tools to design their spaces. And now I'd like to invite Leslie Karpis, 
the CEO and co-founder of Lexa, to tell us how. Thank you, Carly Ann, and thank you, Pano. I'm Leslie Oliver Karpis, the CEO and co-founder of Lexet. We are an artificial intelligence-powered search solution for furniture retailers to enhance omni-channel shopping experiences and improve conversion. We help their shoppers have a smarter, more personalized interior design experience. Meet Amy. Amy's got a new job, and she wants a new living room to go with it. However, there's a gauntlet that stands between Amy and her dream couch. She goes to her favorite website, CB2, to start finding that right couch for her. She knows what she wants, she's got an idea of what she's looking for, but she's overwhelmed by a sea of options. She goes to Pinterest to try to give her some inspiration, but three hours later, she's no closer to getting to that dream couch and nothing on her board is even close to her price point. And she has no idea if it'll even fit in her space. And so frustrated, Amy doesn't know what to do. She decides she's just gonna stick with that old futon from college. This is unfortunate, not just for Amy, but CB2 has just lost a sale. They have a couch for every shopper. Amazon can sell everything from toilet paper to lettuce online, but CB2 can't sell a couch. They're not alone. Furniture as an e-commerce sector has the lowest conversion rate only 1.5%, because at the end of the day, brands cannot answer their customer's biggest need. What is on style for them? What will look good in their space? What will fit their space? Is it for them? Lexet analyzes your space, understands your needs, and makes direct personalized recommendations. We use an AI-powered spatial search tool to give our shoppers, your shoppers, what they need. So let's say CB2 had integrated Lexet. Amy goes online, uses our app to scan her environment. We tag all of the furniture in this space. And she, Amy notices that her Navajo rug is really something that she wants to design around. So when she goes back to the CB2 website and looks for couches, now all of those search results are custom tailored to her needs. She's only being shown couches that work for her. She finds a couch that's teal, she never thought teal was gonna work for her, and then can then visualize it in her environment. She never thought that teal would be something she'd be into, but it really picks up the rug quite nicely, and she's enthralled, she buys the couch. CB2 has done more than just sell a couch in this instance. They have engaged a customer in a way that they never could before. Amy is happy, they've increased her loyalty to them, and also, she now has a catalog of all the furniture of her environment. So when she goes back to CB2 and she's looking at an accent table, we can tell her that accent table is gonna look great in her space. And so what we've done is increased her confidence that she's buying the right thing for her. So our SaaS platform comprises of three core SDKs, object recognition, product recommendation, and spatial analytics. This is bolstered by a portfolio of 38 exclusively licensed, pa licensed patents from our parent company, Intellectual Ventures, that literally have Bill Gates and Sasha Nadella as some of the lead inventors on our set of IP. Our model is quite simple. We share risk with our partners, taking just a 10% fee per user who touches our tools, but then we throw a kicker on top for performance after a one-time integration fee. But what we're most enthusiastic about is offering them an analytics pipeline that lets them understand their consumer space and most importantly, what their consumers need. The furniture market is a large industry, $100 billion plus, but the top 10 players in that space make up over 20% of the market and we're quite excited to be talking to more than half of them. We have a large Swedish furniture giant that you can probably guess that we're spooling up a pilot with right now. And we also have a pilot in the works with Restoration Hardware. And would love to talk to you if you're a big furniture brand after this presentation. But furniture is just where we're started. Our toolkit is going to do amazing things for ad targeting, trend analysis, but most importantly, the half trillion dollar insurance space where you can use our tools for home policy input, for insurance adjustment in any building that's been damaged, and for automating home appraisal. We have a rock star team that I am humbled to be surrounded by. Our CTO is the celebrity designer, Francis Batanti. You can see his work in the Smithsonian Museum, the Cooper Hewitt Museum, um, the Pompidou Center, the Vitra Museum. He was a Wired Innovation Fellow in 2015. 
Azam Khan is leaving his cushy job as director of new ventures at Intellectual Ventures to join us, they're our parent company, and he used to be the deputy chief of staff of the patent office. Sarah Kizlatan, our head of product, has designed branded environments for both Google and Intel, and Kate Croft, our genius wordsmith and head of brand, uh, worked with me at my last company, MetaMason, where we 3D printed medical devices and also collaborated with Francis on that. Uh, a number of us are former architects, and as such, we are very obsessed with personalization and how to use digital tools to enhance people's design. At Lexet, we believe that space should be beautiful, personalized, and functional, and that with the right tools, anyone can design their world. Thank you so much, and I hope you'll come and talk to me afterwards to find out what Lexet can do for you. Thank you, Les. All right, up next is Philogic. So today, customers are impatient and they expect their deliveries to arrive yesterday. With Philogic, retailers can offer their customers expedited shipping services at ground prices. Let's find out how from CEO and co-founder of Philogic, Bill Thayer. Thank you, carly -Ann. Good morning, everybody. Uh, hello, I am Bill Thayer, co-founder and CEO of Philogic. Philogic is an in-mall logistics platform servicing stores growing ship from store fulfillment process, which is caused by growing e-commerce demand and customer expectations. We offer retail partners expedited service at ground pricing from our zero integration, frictionless, in, uh, frictionless platform at the mall. So meet Kate. Kate is an example of a typical retail store manager. Based on the growth of e-commerce, her store is now operating like a fulfillment center. She's struggling with how she's managing that staff and how she's hiring to fill those positions. And the last thing is she has the difficulty of trying to manage the priorities of fulfillment location as well as a retail storefront. So Kate needs a partner that can support her changing retail priorities. Now, Kate is serviced logistically by her partner at the mall, Carl. Carl personifies your local logistics uh, parcel care partner. Carl is doing more pickups from the store now based on the growth of e-commerce demand, other than just store deliveries. He's wandering the mall eight hours a day, picking up orders from his retail partners, but those pickups are not staged for efficiency. In many cases, those actual retail orders have to be consolidated in an off-site location, where then they have to be sorted. After that sort, then they have to actually be delivered to that mall location with those same zip codes. Tremendously inefficient. So Carl and parcel carriers like him need a logistics service that can help him improve his, improve his efficiencies and optimize service. So the mall owners, parcel carriers, and retailers inhabit the same ecosystem, but they do not operate as an integrated network. They need somebody to help them connect those clicks to bricks. That's where we come in. So Philogic is an in-mall logistics platform that aggregates e-commerce retail demand and allows us to sort from a facility located at the mall to improve service and lower costs. We offer our service from a location at the mall, which we call a hub. So first what happens is the retailer fulfills ship from store orders at their location, staged like they normally process ship from store orders. Second, Philogic picks up the orders from the store location on their schedule at their time. Next, we bring it back and sort it at our hub location where we break it down by parcel carrier, service level, and zip code where we stage it for convenient pickup. Lastly, we bid out those actual outbound lanes to parcel carriers to provide lower overall costs and efficient movement to save days off the actual delivery time to the actual retail partners. So now in our future with Philogic, stores are now optimized for fulfillment locations. They're no longer having to have orders piled up all over the place, it's now efficient location. Our friend Carl, he's now actually able to pick up from a convenient location. He's no longer having to get out of his truck, walk through the building, drop packages all over the floor. And our mall partners now can offer their retail partners with a differentiating service option that allows them to offer logistics services that will eventually expand beyond ship from store. 
Customers' expectations, they are changing. 70% of every customer out there wants free and fast delivery. So at Philogic, we're able to reduce overall transportation costs by 10%. And the key here is reducing overall expedited shipping by much as 60%, which is table stakes for today's retailers. The market. As we, are growing, as we grow our network, we create economies of scale. So we're happy to say that we'll be launching a, um, a pilot location within the next month with a national mall retail, with a national retailer, or a national mall owner. As we expand, we have the ability to access upwards of 300 mall partners through our network. And our frictionless zero integration mall uh, uh, hub allows us to set up a location in days for as little as $20,000. And then the key becomes this. As we build out this network and create these economies of scales, we're able to offer lower rates to the retailer partners, and then we build outbound distribution facilities to offer lower rates based on the mall or networks of malls. Now, e-commerce at scale ain't cheap. In 2022, fulfillment costs will exceed $110 billion. Last mile fulfillment is $30 billion, or 28% of that. Now, with Philogic, we're helping retailers and we're gonna give, have the opportunity to help them reduce $8 billion of fulfillment cost from the mall. Who we are. So I've been in retail space for 25 plus years in retail logistics, e-commerce, and technology with companies like Macy's and Lomans. My co-founder, Rob, I met a couple of years ago when I was an advisor for Pigeon Box, a venture-backed retail company which he ran as CEO for four years. For that, Rob worked in strategy at Booz Allen Hamilton. Philogic. We believe the future of re uh, brick and mortar retail hinges on e-commerce logistics. We can help retailers reach their, cost, their target consumers from the most efficient fulfillment location, your local shopping mall. We optimize the retailer's ability to utilize their existing assets, inventory, and personnel. The logic will be right there. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Up next, we have Frenzy. So with the rise of social media and the influence of bloggers, shoppers want to buy what they see when they see it. So Frenzy is democratizing and simplifying the way influencer marketing connects customers to brands. So James Chang, the CEO and co-founder, will tell us more about Frenzy. Hi everyone, I'm James Chang, co-founder and CEO of Frenzy. We built an exact match visual search platform that identifies brand specific products in any scene, starting with clothing. Our technology lets influencers monetize their content seamlessly and it allows retailers and brands to make more money. Meet Sonia. Sonia is a top fashion influencer She's the proprietor of classesinternal.com. She receives over 1 million site impressions per month. To monetize her audience today, Sonia must sit there and link exact products manually to photographs, which can take several hours to days, depending on the number of outfits in her post. It turns out she's missing out on 83% of sales opportunities because she didn't provide, provide a link, she didn't have the time, or because the product link she provided was expired or sold out. She can't use traditional visual search applications. She's talked to a few companies about their solutions, but those solutions today only show similar products that aren't from the same brand. And this is unacceptable to her audience, but more importantly to brands, retailers, and advertisers she wants to work with. Introduce Frenzy. Frenzy is a proprietary algorithm that we built in-house that identifies brand-specific clothing in photographs with 92% accuracy today. And this is just the beginning. Our initial product and what we're going to market with is a simple site plugin API that packages our algorithm for any influencer site or media-driven site where they install it one time and it turns all of their images into shoppable storefronts 
Uh, and um, this allows us to drive higher conversions for our retailers and influencers alike. So it's really just as simple as install once, enable on your post, and monetize. We show audiences exact product matches and brand-specific product matches, but when products are sold out or removed from the retailer's site, we show brand-specific alternative options and beyond. And because now we can show audiences what they want and automate that shopping research with a quick jump from the influencer site to the retailer site, we can now maximize conversions for influencers, retailers, and brands and give audience, audiences the instant power to see now, buy now. So let's go back to the example that I showed before. These are images we parsed from Sonia's blog. When we ran them in Frenzy, the algorithm matched two exact SKUs, and for the third product in the outfit, it got a brand-specific match. The important thing to note with these test results is Frenzy is the only market-ready solution for influencers and media-driven sites because we consistently identify brand-specific matches. And there, uh, for the others, it's been very hard for them to crack this media, the media side of the market, which we've been able to do. So some of you may be asking, how is Frenzy achieving exact visual match? It's partly due to the explosion of influencer data that's providing us billions of images, images that are training our neural nets to make these connections between brands and SKUs. We're building a massive catalog from all of these data sources. But it's a two-pronged approach because influencers and media sites, site owners, need to find more ways to monetize content as banner ads become antiquated. But you don't have to believe me or my team's research. Take it from the 300 top fashion influencers that are activating Frenzy plugin that have a combined audience reach of 62 million site impressions per month. These are high profile influencers that wouldn't put any technology on their page that could jeopardize their following. It's very early in our beta, but we're excited to announce that influencers using our plugin have seen a six times increase in their sales conversion rates on the product pages. And that amounts to, so far, $8,000 in retailer e-commerce sales. Uh, sorry, and that's in just a little over four weeks. Um, that may not sound like a lot, and it's very early, but the exciting trend is these influencers were only generating one cent per impression, and that's across the market. Now with Frenzy, they're generating 24 cents per impression, with our take being 2% of that. And we know it's early, these numbers may equalize, but it's exciting to see the uptick which we can attribute to this linking problem that I've been describing. And with fashion blogs, this is our initial target market. Uh, their data is the key to us reaching the exact, uh, theoretical limit for exact visual match. But people forget or they don't know, there's 3.6 million fashion blogs in the US. Last year, they generated $12.2 billion in retail sales, e-commerce sales. Uh, 1.2 million of them are power influencers that are generating over 90,000 impressions per month each. We project that if we continue to capture this market for power influencers, we can generate potentially over a half billion dollars in annual revenue, and that's just our cut. We're starting with fashion, and we're la laser focused on that category, but there's many other verticals that could benefit from exact match visual search. At Frenzy, we've invented a proprietary new method in visual search that learns brand identification, that learns, let me uh, rephrase that, that learns brand identification in an unsupervised setting, whereas others are using human supervised method methods and traditional research. The real value in any deep learning company's IP is not the tech. It's our highly robust structured data set that's truly novel and defensible. Today, we're at 92% brand-specific accuracy. After we close our seed round, we'll be pushing our technology to the theoretical limit of exact visual match. And a higher accuracy means we can dominate this power influencer market faster. 
we've brought together world-renowned machine learning scientists and computer vision scientists from NYU, Columbia, USC, and fashion experts in the industry like myself having previously worked at LVMH to deliver this groundbreaking technology. The future of shopping is see now, buy now, not tech search. We have the team and the technology that will change user experience, advertising, and commerce forever. Thanks for listening. Thank you, James. Up next, we have Viviat. So today, even though we're in the digital age, physical products are still a main touch point between brands and their customers. Viviat is bringing products to life by making them more authentic, trackable, and interactive. Let's find out more from CEO and co-founder, Marcello Gambarali. Thank you, Carly, and good morning. My name is Marcello Gamberale, and I'm here today to introduce you to Viviat. Viviat is a platform that connects brands and consumers through products. It enables immediate verification of authenticity, personalized storytelling, and seamless product registration. This is Marina. She's a sophisticated consumer, and she expects a comprehensive customer experience from her favorite brands. When she buys a high-end product, she wants to immediately verify whether it's authentic, access specific product details, learn about the brand storytelling, and with just one click, get rewards, and register a product so that in case of any trouble, or if she wants to resell it, she will have a proof of purchase in her hand. This is a terrific opportunity for brands to keep their customers engaged, but up until now, results have not been very satisfying. As an example, product registration is stuck at 6%. So Viviat helps brands get their stories and services delivered to the customers as they buy and use a product. And we believe that the best way to do it is the product itself. Viviat assigns to products a unique digital identity called product passport and linked to blockchain for proof of authenticity. Multiple technologies enable a one-to-one -one connection with the consumer, making product passport accessible via smartphone. Our platform sits on top of companies' tools like web portals, ERPs, CRMs, to allow an easy integration of existing content and to build a personalized customer experience to be delivered at the user's fingertips. Let's see how it works. You would scan a product, no mobile application needed, just open up the camera or use the NFC tag, and accessing our product passport is a seamless experience. First, you verify the authenticity of a product. Then, all the information you were looking for is available in seconds. Product details, videos, and registering the, pr the product is just one click away. Given the value add by rewards and warranty management system is also made interesting for consumers. And afterwards, we measure and analyze all activations, and all data can be integrated to any business intelligence tools. So, accessible, rich, and personalized data is making the fortunes of online shopping. We are bringing a similar experience to retail, enhancing customer engagement across channels. Today, an engaged customer generates 1.7 times more revenues than a normal customer. That's a very key opportunity for brands. Today, customers like 90% of us use our smartphone while shopping in store. And one out of two is willing to share personal information to get the right answer at the right moment for, from a brand. That is why our model has already shown to be 
delivering over 200% in ROI. Unlike competition, Viviat combines the versatility of a software as a service with the simplicity of our product CMS and the security of blockchain, giving brands one single tool to manage all connected products. And this is not just a concept. We have proved our concept delivering authentication, storytelling, and product registration to several brands across Europe, generating over 200,000 euros in revenues. And in just three months, we have a very promising sales pipeline here in the US. And today, I'm very happy and proud to announce that our collaboration with Melissa Shu will deploy our solution across 700 stores across the country here in the US. Target market. We are target the world of consumer goods. Consumables, durable goods, luxury, that all together generate over 5.5 trillion US dollars in revenues every year. But more specifically, we're targeting customer experience management, which is growing terrifically at the pace of 23% year over year and expected to reach 17 billion US dollars by the end of 2022. At Viviat, we have a great mix of professionals with entrepreneurial experience, a deep knowledge, uh, a deep, deep technical skills, and a deep knowledge about the world of consumer goods. More than ever before, brands are focusing on turning products into experience. And Viviat will forever change the way Consumers interacts with products and brands. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marcello. So next up, we have Hemster. So for those customers who are looking for a personalized fit for their ready-to-wear garments, without making that frustrating trip to a tailor, Hemster is taking the hassle out of the traditional alterations process. I'd like to invite CEO and co-founder Allison Lee to tell us more about Hemster. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. I'm Allison Lee, founder and CEO of Hemster. We illuminate the most frustrating part of shopping, finding that perfect size by plugging in our next-gen tailoring solution into your shopping experience. I started Hemster after a particularly frustrating visit to a local tailor. When I grew up in Korea, tailoring was a natural part of shopping, not an afterthought. I saw a huge need for customization tools for retailers by streamlining the fragmented tailor market. So I left Peel, where I grew the company from $20,000 to $15 million in less than a year. And I found Angela, our retail expert who brings uh, experience across Bloomingdale's and high-end boutiques, and our master tailor, Amanda, who understands tailoring market better than anyone. And now let's follow Jessica. She has a wedding this Saturday and she needs a new dress. And guys, it's Tuesday. She rushes to the mall to try on many dresses, all of which are a little bit too long. She eventually settles for this floral dress at Banana Republics. And now, she has to travel to a local tailor where she goes through a stressful and time-consuming experience. She has to pay in cash, she has to negotiate for a turnaround time, and she doesn't even know if the tailor specializes in dresses. All the good feelings she had at the mall completely disappears by the time she leaves the tailor. Jessica does not need a fully custom-made dress. What she wants is an affordable ready-wear that fits her in the right places. 171 million shoppers are going through the same multi-step process to find something that fits. No wonder the retailers are losing $54 billion every year due to this frustrating experience. Until Hemster. We transform Jessica's experience right in the fitting room. When she tries on the first dress, she sees a mirror decal that tells her to create your own size. She asks about Hemster to the store associate. 
and our store associate can fit the shoppers using our patent pending roller sticker in less than a minute. When Jessica purchases the dress, store associate tells her to come back in two days. And store associate brings Jessica's dress to the concierge, which doubles as Hempster Station. Concierge processes our order into our dashboard, collecting the customer data effortlessly. And our dashboard auto matches Jessica's dress with the best tailor for the job. This system allows the tailors to only work on pieces that they're confident in and equipped for to bring the best quality for Jessica. And through this streamlined process, Hemster collects Jessica's unique fit data down to quarter of an inch. Now with Hemster, Jessica can visit any store in the mall and get the exact same fit as the floral dress. Once the dress is ready, Jessica gets the text notification from us and comes back into the store, giving the retailer another meaningful upselling opportunity. And Hemster solution works. We have partnered with Westfield in San Francisco to bring our solution to their shoppers and retailers. We were marketed to over 60,000 shoppers and the concierge was trained to be our first Hemster station. And we generated incredible results. For the retailers, who saw 15% increase in their sales. And 23% of the shoppers came back multiple times to make purchase with our fit data. And since launch, we've driven over $200,000 in additional sales for the retailers with our solution. And we have happy customers, five stars on Google. And we're very proud to announce that we have 99% accuracy rate from 2,000 garments. And our customers describe Hemster as reliable, useful, and unique experience. And now, we have partnered with the three biggest retail property groups in the US to bring Hemster service to everywhere, Westfield, Simon, and Mace Ridge. Total, we have 300 premium mall locations in our pipeline, and we're choosing 14 West Coast to launch this quarter. By the end of next year, we will be live in 82 locations covering top 20 cities. And this is just the beginning, <coughs> this is just the beginning of Hemster's growth. Through our mall partnerships, we will have a national footprint and we will expand into direct to consumer solution to build out each user's unique fit profile. Ultimately, we're bringing that data back into online shopping experience to bring the tailored fit across all sales channels. Hemster is not just a tailoring experience. We are bringing personalized sizes to off the rack inventory through reliable, useful, and unique shopping experience. Hemster is disrupting readywear one hem at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Up next, we have Store DNA. So, Store DNA gives retailers the intelligent and actionable insights they need to make better decisions and increase their revenue. Let's find out how from CEO and co founder Martin Birich. Thank you. Hello, my name is Martin Birac. I'm the CEO of StoreDNA. StoreDNA is a decision-making platform for brick-and-mortar retailer with a core purpose to increase store P&Ls. Unlike people counters, Wi-Fi analytics, heat maps, and all of the data providers who do a great job of getting the data to the retailer, StoreDNA actually goes to the extra mile and delivers actionable recommendations which are implementable right away across the fleet. Let's see what happens today at retail organizations. All of the key functions are overwhelmed with backward looking data, which gives them a little space for smart decision making. 
traffic times conversion times ASP times UPT equals revenue times margin equals profit. We all know this. But what happens with dwell time? What happens with demographics? How do we make sure that we make a decision which really pushes our shopping experiences and revenue? All of this unstructured data is leaving us in complete dark. Enter store DNA. First, a real actionable recommendation platform. Let's summon a store and let's solve this issue together. Imagine this is a shoe wall in any of a shoe wall companies. We use existing video feeds to analyze high level of behavioral data. What I mean by this? I mean exact product interactions for every single SKU. This is giving us intention to buy. The next step is to go down and to match this with numbers of units sold from a POS data. This allows us to zoom in on one particular shoe and say, hey, this shoe has a lot of interactions, but it's not being sold. Why? What is the solution? If you have it on stock, we should consider Markdown. This is Action Board in action. This allows us to be the only platform in the world who uses high fidelity computer vision to get down to a SKU level and to analyze the shopping experience relevance on every part of a purchase path. Storefronts, assortment, in-store promos, and getting really down to getting the best navigation and best sales stuff and best membership rewards programs. And we also do something else which nobody else does. These recommendations are tested and verified across the whole fleet. Our decision maps work on SKU, category, store, and chain level. And I'm going to show you now what probably has never been shown before live. We're going to go and we're going to see a deep dive from a fleet chain worldwide view. We're going to zoom into the category, we're going to go down to the SKU, and on every step of the way, we're going to automatically recommend what do we need to do with our categories, assortment, and stuff in order to optimize our stores. So from left to right, this is traffic, and from bottom to up, this is spent. And we all know that in some of the stores, we have a lot of traffic, but we are not really converting, but we don't know why. This is the only platform in the world who could diagnose, is it the product issue, is it the staff issue, is it the issue of environment and category navigation. And we find and optimize and nudge retailers to optimize their stores down to a SKU level. And it gives actionable solutions on every single step of the way. We now came down to a SKU level, which I've shown you at the beginning of the presentation. Now, every once in a while, there is a technology who comes and changes how the businesses work. And people thought, and they threw multiple billions of dollars in camera companies and in data companies. However, this has never changed anything because the data itself doesn't tell anything. Our strategy is to really uncover shopper behavior data on every channel of every single customer. We spent three years in the apparel and clothing industry, especially concentrated in sports. And we are the company who has unprecedented industry level knowledge because we've actually came from a flagship store to the licensed store and to the entire fleet. And also we've tested how does the same brand function in a multi-brand environment of a wholesaler. And by the way, we did this also with automobile. Audi in Geneva car show, in dealership, and in a pop-up store. How do we make a frictionless shopping experience which in return creates a loyal customer? And when you look at my eyeballs now, you will not see any slight doubt that when we enter a new customer in apparel and the footwear industry, and in the automobile industry, that we cannot move the whole fleet by at least 50 to 100% based point of increased profitability. 
Our business model is pretty straightforward. Super simple one-time implementation fee, annual action board subscription fee, and a curated workshop program to make sure that we embed the system within the organization. Typical tickets come from 75K to 250K per year. And in the first six months, we get the ROI. These are the customers that are already using store DNA and that are already optimizing shopping experiences across their channels. And we also work with the leading industry consulting companies as we are a part of the, their retail transformation programs which they are conducting for their customers. Our team of 10 is based out of Amsterdam, New York, and we have a development center in Croatia, where I'm from. And I would like to invite to stage Uroš Lekic, my co-founder. And also, please stand up Scott Crisanti, our VP of Sales, 10 years of consulting experience, a CEO of a huge French consulting management company. And I'm going to make a special announcement today. There is a person here, Pierre Besset. Stand up, please. Who is joining us as a VP of strategy and growth. And I'm going to end up with one special thing which we want to share with you at the end of the day. What we've created is not only the unprecedented decision-making platform which allows retailers to go down to a skew level of decision-making, what I'm going to show you today, we also created an automated, unprecedented level of visual insights. And what you're going to see today is not a 3D animation. And what you're going to see today is an automated product which is visualizing information in total, entirely way you've never seen before. We did this with Samsung. I believe we have two Samsung guys in the room. And we call it 3D engagement map. Please enjoy. I want to thank you for your time. This was Store DNA, Uroš Lekic, Martin Birac. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Martin. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Converge. Converge helps brands consistently communicate with their customers in a voice that is both strong and authentic. I'd like to invite the CEO and co-founder, Audrey Wu, to tell us more about Converge. Thank you, Carly Ann, and thank you to the band for making me feel like Michelle Pfeiffer from Fabulous Bake Recoys. Yeah. So, hi everyone, good morning. I'm Audrey Wu, co-founder and CEO of Converge. Converge is a B2B enterprise voice and messaging platform for enterprise brands that want to automate their brand voice in the same voice they've used in existing legacy channels. So I'd like to introduce our team. Um, our team has been behind some of the most successful industry chatbots, including Sephora, H&M, the Grammys, Amazon, Lionsgate, and Disney. I previously headed the US offices of a conversational AI technology company called InPerson, and I've been named one of the top 25 chatbot influencers worldwide. Prior, I was an investment banker. My co-founder, Liz Snower, which is over there, uh, she came from the messaging platform Kick, where she led development for bots for Sephora and H&M. Prior, she held management roles at Target and got the ranker. Liz and I met at a chatbot conference, which we were both speaking at two years ago. Our CTO, Amit Gupta, is an AI and bots expert and a serial entrepreneur. All right, so I promise she's awesome, okay? So you're meeting someone else. Um, this is Betty. She's a CMO of a beauty company here in New York. So like billions of other people, Betty mostly communicates through messaging apps. And she's also like super techie, right? She lives and breathes tech. 
And she knows that there's a massive shift in consumer behavior. Conversational commerce is here, and it's here to stay. So in working with our marketing team, Betty's noticed that there is a very steady decline in email open rates. And because she works closely with operations, she knows how necessary, yet costly, call centers are. So these were a couple of reasons why she was super bullish on bots from the get-go. However, the first bot her team put out was deemed a miss. It was based on a simple decision tree and could not even understand basic commands. So, you know, it really did nothing for them. Enter Converge. Converge is a conversational platform that brings your brand front and center of the experience. Unlike other chatbot platforms that churn out decision tree-based chatbots or take a simple thing like a product feed and just shove it into a template, Converge platform features our AI computational lexicon, which processes existing social and digital content to extract brand vernacular and automated fashion. And on top of that, uh, we are platform agnostic, which means we can deploy on any platform that your consumers are on. We are on voice devices such as Alexa, Google Home, and text messaging devices such as Facebook Messenger, Kik, SMS, and Twitter. So let's be honest. Betty's first bot sucked. OK, we've all been through this. This is it's an infinite loop of frustration. So thanks to our platform, she now has a bot that's way more conversational and allows a shopper to shop on their own terms, all while retaining the brand voice. And guess what? Even better, we were able to deploy a voice experience in tandem with the chat bot. Betty knows that 30% of all purchases are now done through voice assistance. So half a search is going to happen on voice assistance by the year 2020. Americans spend five times more on messaging apps than they do on traditional voice calls. The average millennial sends 67 text messages a day, and 22% Americans shop on voice and chat already. In other words, the future is now. Old school call centers cost about a trillion dollars a year, yet two-thirds of those calls can be automated. So if we conservatively estimate that 10% of those market size businesses are very heavily invested in brand voice and really care about their brand voice being consistent across all digital touch points, we're looking at a 90 billion total addressable market. The beauty industry in itself has upwards of 4,000 brands. So great conversations good for business. Just ask our customers. Currently, Sephora, Proactive, Shopify, and the Grammys are on the Converge platform with amazing results. We see upwards of 50% open rates for push notification, best-in-class quiz completion rates, and happy users that are spending an unprecedented amount of time chatting with our products. And our SaaS model, our SaaS platform, performs great. Last year, we achieved over $200,000 in revenue and can easily exceed $1 million this year. And soon, we'll be working with a global cosmetics company and an automated company on innovative voice experiences. Thank you, and uh, come find me later, or the other co-founder in red, Liz, um, to find out how Converge can help bring your brand into a digitally conversational world. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Next, we have Kira Kira 3D. So Kira Kira 3D is empowering the next generation of female engineers and designers to develop their STEM skills in a way that's more engaging and creative. Sue Somersall, CEO and founder, will tell us how Kira Kira works. Hi, I'm Sue Somersall, founder of Kira Kira 3D, an online 3D design community that empowers teen girls. Functioning like a virtual Etsy, our community of future female engineers and entrepreneurs are creating thousands of objects without ever having to carry any physical inventory. So meet Michaela. She is like the majority of her peers. Unfortunately, 80% of girls lose interest and proficiency in math and science before they reach high school. 
So Michaela thinks she's bad at math, but she loves building things. So when she learns about 3D design, she gets excited. Unfortunately, she encounters things like this, content like guns and auto parts, things that aren't relevant to her. Then she finds Kira Kira 3D. She's able to learn how to design things like her own iPhone case, her own jewelry, or a skateboard, things that she actually uses. So our product basically reduces traditional barriers of entry, the ability to learn and have to use ex very expensive, sometimes expensive, but also difficult to learn software, and uh, 3D printers that are often hard to access. And we also have a website where she can actually learn how to use mechanical engineering programs, ranging from SolidWorks to Autodesk beginner products. So this is how it works. You start out with our 3D building blocks, and then you create your own virtual model. You can share this model in AR with your friends and family, and you can also order the 3D print. So now I'll let you hear some from our customers directly. Wait, so it's... And it's solid. You can see that it's um, <laughs> definitely well-rounded. And it's... Oh, there we go. Okay, and now... It's good. And here, and this part... Yay! I did it! <laughs> Whoa! That was really cool. It's awesome. So how do we make money? We have our virtual Etsy model where every time a customer sells a 3D print, they make money and so do we. But we also are getting incredible corporate partners, ones in Silicon Valley in particular, uh, that are just as excited about promoting girls in STEM as we are. So, so far, we, with our new app, we've had over 10,000 app downloads, and we're excited to say that we've helped our users create over 5,000 unique generated 3D files. And last year, we had over 200,000 users on our educational website. We're already working with companies like HP, Intel, and Autodesk, and educational institutions on the East Coast like NYU and, of course, Parsons. But we're in conversations with a range of corporate partners, from tech to education to, of course, retail. And we're going to grow our user base, in addition to the corporate partners, also with influencers. Here we're working with Will I Am on some 3D designs, and Jessica Alba is wearing one of our students' 3D prints. So our market size, there are over 12 million teen girls in the US spending over 2,000 a year on apparel and accessories. This is an over $25 billion addressable market. And a comparable company like Etsy did over 250 million in sales last year. The 3D printed jewelry market specifically will reach over 11 billion by 2020. So we're the right team to do this because we're a product made for women by women. We're designers coming from some of the top design schools in the country, and we're an over 80% female engineering team. Thank you for listening, and I hope you can help us and join us in redesigning the future. Thank you, Suze. And now, last but not least, is Clark. So for those customers who want to access or recall items that they found in store, Clark simplifies the process of creating a virtual wish list that can be accessed across multiple brands. I'd like to invite co-founder and CEO Melissa Gonzalez to tell us more about Clark. Good morning, my name is Melissa Gonzalez and I am the CEO and co-founder of Clark. Clark is your wish list in the sky for brick and mortar shopping and is helping retailers increase sales and raise their average order value. Let's meet Jane. Jane just got her year-end bonus, and she's looking to update her apartment. 
Like you and me, she is a multi-channel shopper. And she likes to touch and feel in store, but also research online when it comes to a considered purchase. She wants an easy way to remember the exact item that she liked in store. She doesn't want to have to take photos of everything, jot down notes and find them later. She's fatigued from yet another app download, and she just doesn't want to have to do so much work to find it all again later. Like Jane, when a consumer is in the market for a considered item, only 30% of in-store shoppers actually convert leaving brands and retailers with little to no knowledge of what 70% of their in-store shoppers picked up, had interest in, or could have bought today. Insert Clark. Now, consumers and retailers can seamlessly connect in the online and offline worlds with simple customer tap-to-save actions that allow us to capture their interest in just seconds and allow them to build a virtual wish list that they can easily access later, just as if they were shopping an online store. So now, Jane can keep all the things that she loves top of mind without all the extra work and enjoy shopping again. And our retailer, instead of a lost sale, has a direct line of communication with Jane around all the things she loves. Our solution does not require an app download. Our retailers add a reader to their store. Customers access their wish list with a unique URL. And they can opt in to product announcements and sales announcements. And retailers gain insights about product interests and purchase intent. Once they've registered their cart, they simply log back in with a four-digit PIN. And they can see all the items that they've tapped in store to add to their cart. If they're interested, they can also share their cart with somebody else to get their opinion on what they should buy, or maybe send a gentle hint of something they'd like as a gift. We are bringing offline shopping to a level playing field by creating a continuous communication loop across channels and narrowing the 70%. Our shoppers will enjoy the rich experience of physical discovery, complemented by the conveniences of online shopping. And our retailers will gain insights that they can monetize, just the way they do online today, as we capture individual shopper journey, dwell times, product interest, and what we're most excited about, purchase intent. We can get our stores up and running in just a couple of weeks. And as more stores join our network, we will not only transform a shopper's experience, but we will build a universal wish list for brick and mortar. And our retailers will have insights to the offline world that will help them make better marketing and merchandising decisions and improve their bottom line. With our first pilot, a home goods store in Chicago, we saw that 84% of our shoppers took a key. 40% of them built a wish list, and we increased conversions of in-store shoppers by almost 50% at an average order value that was almost 300% higher than their average in-store AOV. Today, we're starting with a considered purchase market, where a consumer may go back and forth before making a decision. In hard goods categories like furniture and electronics, and soft goods like high-end apparel. In 2017, that was a combined spend of $345 billion. Knowing that 60% of all shoppers showroom, that's a $207 billion retail spend. With a 15% conversion, that's a $30 billion opportunity. Before starting Clark, I founded the Lioness Group, an award-winning agency of retail strategists and pop-up architects who have helped open stores for over 150 stores across major cities in the United States for clients including Marc Jacobs, Estee Lauder, Cody, and more. I'm also the author of The Pop-Up Paradigm, How Brands Build a Human Connection in a Digital Age. My co-founder and CTO, Aaron Smolkis, has over 14 years of technical experience. He's a former developer at Apple and was the lead developer for a chatbot for director consumer company Dirty Lemon. With our patent-pending technology, 
Consumers will be able to enjoy shopping in physical stores with the conveniences of online transacting. You learn more at getclark.io. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. All right, that brings us to the end of our show. Um, I'd just like to ask everyone to give another round of applause to Cohort 5. They've done an amazing job. And thank you to all of you again for showing up today to support our founders. Special thank you again to our investors, sponsors, and mentors who've worked really hard to support our community. And I'd like to really thank the XRC team for all the work that they've put in this cohort. Thank you, guys. <laughs> And before I invite everyone up to meet with the uh, founders, um, you know, as Pano mentioned before, some of our best uh, founders and companies come from referrals. Uh, if you know a great startup disrupting the retail and consumer goods space, please let them know that the applications for Cohort 6 close tomorrow, so they should apply. Um, and on that note, um, I'd like to invite everyone up on stage to meet the founders. Still, oh. hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh oh. So um, we want to actually special uh, congratulate you for just an incredible job well done. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a really tough job, and she's done a phenomenal job. And what we want to do is, on behalf of the entire class, um, provide you with bedazzled, since you've bedazzled us so Thank wonderfully you. over the last cohort and for many more to come. Oh my gosh. Signed by everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. So by all means, um, we're not going downstairs. We're going to stay in here because of the fire, all kinds of other issues. Uh, the startups will be at their stations. You're welcome to hang out for a while. Thank you so much for coming.